Happy New Year to you and welcome to the first episode of Food and the Single Guy of 2022. I hope you had a wonderful Christmas and New Year celebration and I want to wish you and yours all the best for this new year. Now on this episode of Food and the Single Guy, I'm gonna bring you another dish from the homeland. This is a beverage from the black cuisine, but it has its origins in Jewish culture. Now, I'm gonna give you the backstory in a minute, and I do this not to annoy you, because I know that some of you don't like it when I give you the backstory, you don't like it when I talk, but this is part of my cultural heritage. It's part of my legacy. I have to make sure that I preserve these dishes. And I'm very big on this. I've explained this to you when I make dishes from my country that are traditional, that are authentic. I try to stick as close as I possibly can to the original, to the authentic recipe. And because a lot of people are not familiar with my country and I want to put my country on the map, um, I have to give you the backstory. I cannot just come here and say, okay, we're going to cook this today. No. These are the ingredients, go ahead. No, I have to give you the backstory, okay? So if you are one of those people who don't like the backstory, I know you're gonna skip to the end of the video because some of you tell me that you skip to the end of the video. I don't know what the purpose of that is because you will not learn anything if you do that, but that is on you. In 2022, we're not gonna worry about that, all right? Now, <laughs> as I said, this is a beverage from the homeland and Back in the day, before the Jewish people settled in my country, they used to make this dish, this beverage, with barley. Now, barley is um, a, related to rice. You know how rice grows? It's like very long and sleek and slender. That is how barley grows. I don't know how they used to make it back then with the barley, because barley, as far as I'm concerned, is not innate to my country. So when they settled in my country, um, they couldn't find the barley, so they ended up using almonds instead. And I have to tell you, um, it is a delicious, delicious drink, okay? Now, um, I told you a couple of videos ago also that we, we have a very small but very active Jewish community in my country. And in fact, I have uploaded two videos, if not more, of dishes, recipes that are actually from the Jewish cuisine, such as pom and popido. Now, this beverage, it's called amandel orjada. Amandel means almond, and orjada, that is the name of the beverage. Um, it is basically almond milk that you extract, to which you add water and sugar, and you bring that to a boil to make a very thick and rich syrup, okay? And then you dilute that with water, and you drink it. I have to tell you that this is a very, very expensive beverage to make because the ingredients are very hard to come by, especially in this day and age, okay? And in addition to that, it is um, 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 a beverage that is not served every day. It is, it's like, like an exclusive kind of beverage that you want to serve your guests at um, certain types of birthdays, like specific birthdays, for, for instance, at 65, like an, a nice even number birthday, or weddings, or special graduations, or something like that, okay? Sometimes people indulge and they just drink it maybe twice, three times a week, I don't know, but most of the time, Amandel Orjada is consumed on special days, special occasions, okay? Now, let me tell you the story about the almonds, because sweet almonds um, are readily available in this country. This beverage calls for bitter almonds. I have searched high and low in this country for bitter almonds. I couldn't find them anywhere. So I decided to go online and do some research as to why we cannot find bitter almonds. And that is when I saw the notice on all the websites that I found, um, you know, the, the, the almonds. We cannot supply the almonds because the European Food uh, Authority has deemed the bitter almonds to be toxic and be, if people consume more than 12 of these almonds, they can die and whatever have you. And I'm like, I was born and raised in the Republic of Suriname. We have consumed these bitter almonds for centuries. We're still here. Now, let me tell you something. 
As I say, I always tell you, when I make dishes for my country that are authentic, I, li I, I like to stick as close as I possibly can to the authentic original recipe because I don't need anybody to tell me, you didn't do that the right way. Nah, because even though I am not an expert, I am not an expert, but I know my stuff. And I know that if you make this beverage without the bitter almonds, it is not going to taste the way it's supposed to taste. Boo-boo, when I tell you I searched high and low for these bitter almonds, I couldn't find them. So then I remembered in 2013, I went to Sicily because I wanted to visit Mount Etna and the town of Etna and all of that stuff. So on our way, we drove you know, to, to Etna and on our way, we stopped at a, a, in a town called Tormina and they had a little um, what you call it? a little museum, a little gift shop, a little stand with sweets and limoncello and everything. And um, I, I saw something, it, said, it was called Orzata. So I asked the lady, I said, Cosa Orzata? What is Orzata? So she was like, Orzata una bevanda a base di mandorle. I said, oh, so Orzata is a beverage that is made with almonds. I said, well, can I have some? So I tasted it. Let me tell you something, I had a flashback to my country. I was so shocked that in a European country I tasted something from my homeland, a European country that is not real, that doesn't have any connection to my country, let me put it that way. So then I remembered my time in Italy and I said let me check on Italian websites if I can find these bitter almonds and I did. It chapped my ass because the bitter almonds were I think 14 or 15 euros for 500 grams, but the shipping, I paid close to 40 euros for those bitter almonds. But I said, I cannot care, I could, cannot possibly begin to care, I need the bitter almonds because this is one of the main ingredients for this beverage. So I hope you will appreciate the effort that I made to get the bitter almonds to bring you this delicious, delicious beverage from my country. All right, now having said all of that, I'm gonna list all the ingredients for you in the information box below the video. So without further ado, let us continue. Okay, you guys, so what I have here is about 500 grams of sweet almonds. And what I have here are the very expensive bitter almonds that I purchased in Italy, which I spoke about in the intro of this video. I'm going to use about 250 grams of the bitter almonds. What I'm going to do next, I'm going to soak both the bitter almonds as well as the sweet almonds in some hot water. Okay, you guys, so next I'm going to soak these almonds in some hot water. Just like so. There we go. So we're going to allow them to soak for about 5 to 10 minutes and especially the sweet almonds. We have to peel these. We have to remove the skin of the sweet almonds so they look just like these. Okay, you guys, so the almonds have been soaking for about 10 minutes. What I'm going to do next, I'm going to remove the skin of the sweet almonds and there's really nothing to it. You just add a little pressure to the almond and the skin comes off just like that. See? One more time, just a little pressure, and there we go. Okay, you guys, so we're finished peeling the sweet almonds, and what I did a second ago, I rinsed them, I drained them, and then I poured them into a clean bowl. And I wanna remind you that if you're gonna make this beverage, every utensil that you use should be clean. If not, your beverage can, and actually it will spoil, okay? And I have to say that the sweet almonds, they don't have a scent, I don't smell them whereas the bitter ones have a very sweet and rich smell. I love it. So next what I'm gonna do, I am going to combine both the bitter almonds and the sweet almonds, and then we're going to blitz them in the blender. Now allow me to explain to you this setup because over here we have the blender, over here we have the mixed almonds, and over here we have my pot in which I make all of my syrups. You have seen this pot before. In this pot, I have my cheesecloth and I have rinsed my cheesecloth, but you wanna make sure that your cheesecloth is clean. As I said earlier, if you're gonna make this beverage, you want to make sure that every utensil that you use is clean or else your beverage will spoil, okay? So now I am going to add 
some of the almonds to the blender. Just like so. To that, I'm gonna add a little bit of the water in which the bitter almonds have soaked. I did not get rid of this because it adds flavor to the beverage, okay? So here we go. Just a little bit. There we go. And next, we are going to blitz this into a nice, fine paste. So when you're done, you should end up with almond milk that looks very thick and very rich and very creamy. I'm not sure if the camera picks this up, but it should be very thick and very creamy and it smells delicious. So next, I'm gonna pour this into my pan with the cheesecloth. So next we're gonna add three liters of water to the almond puree. There we go. And then next what we're gonna do, we are going to squeeze the milk out of the cheesecloth into the pan and that is what we're gonna use to make the syrup with. Guys, when I tell you it smells delicious already, it, it just takes me back. It smells of home already, and it's not even ready yet. Oh my goodness gracious, I'm having such a flashback to my youth. <laughs> wow. Mm. Made with love, you guys. Made with love. Oh yes. So let me go ahead and squeeze the uh, milk out of the almond puree. So you want to grab all the ends of your cheesecloth and then you're simply going to twist and turn, twist and turn, all the while making sure that your hands are clean, your cheesecloth is clean, this smells delicious, you have no idea! Oh my goodness gracious! And you want to extract as much milk as you possibly can, okay? Okay, you guys, so this is it. Now, don't throw away the almond pulp because you can make almond cookies with this, alright? So put this in the freezer and save it for a day when you feel like making cookies <laughs> with the kids. All right? All right. Okay, guys. So next we're going to add five kilograms of sugar. Yes, five. And we're going to give this a good mix. And you want to try to dilute the sugar as much as you can before taking it to the stove. So we're going to bring this to a boil and the key to this syrup is you want to bring it to a boil three times. So when it comes to a boil the first time you turn down the flame and then you allow it to simmer and then you turn up the heat again and then you bring it to a boil again and then you repeat one last time. So let me go ahead and do that. And of course, when it's all done, I'll show you what it looks like. So as you can see, it is simmering nicely and it did come to a boil a couple of seconds ago, but I was on the phone, so I could not film that for you. Hopefully the second time it comes to a boil, I will be ready. But this is looking good, this is smelling good. And after it comes to a boil, you turn down the flame and you allow it to simmer for 10 to 15 minutes and then you turn up the flame again, bring it to another boil, etc, etc. So it is coming to a second boil. We're going to turn down the flame yet again, like so, and then give it another stir. So we're going to allow this to simmer on low heat for 10 to 15 minutes. And then we're going to bring it to a boil one last time. So my syrup is simmering away nicely. We're going to turn up the heat again, and we're going to bring it to a final boil. There we go. We're going to turn down the heat again. And now we're going to allow this to simmer for anywhere 
between a half an hour to 45 minutes because you want the syrup to be very thick. Now before we move on to the final presentation, I just want to give you a couple of tips and tricks. First of all, do not drink too much of this beverage because as healthy as almonds are, this beverage is very sweet, it is very rich, okay? You do want to think about your waistline, don't you? Now something else that I have to share with you is this. You never add almond extract to this beverage. You never do that. I don't care what anybody tells you, you never do that, okay? And that is why you use the bitter almonds because the bitter almonds will add that very sweet and very um, delicate taste of almonds that, that this drink is so famous for. And lastly, the way you prepare this drink is as follows. You add a little bit of the syrup to your glass. You then add some water to dilute it just like so and then you give it a nice stir just like so and then you take little bitty sips mm. baby when i tell you this is the ish okay it is the ish let me take another sip mm. It is delicious. Now, speaking of the final presentation, I hope you appreciate the effort that I put into the final presentation. I always tell you we eat with our eyes first. And in case you're wondering what to do with the skins of the almonds, you simply allow them to dry on some kitchen paper. And as you can see, they make for perfect decoration material. All right? Now, if you decide to try our version of almond orjada, amando orjada, let me know how it went because I'm always interested in hearing from you. I want to wish you once again a happy 2022 and I'm looking forward to seeing you on the next episode of the award-winning original culinary web series, Food and the Single Guy, with me, your very own Amaru. Thank you for everything, you guys. Have a good one. Bye.